Howdy, damn it. Sorry, Ags, we did not get the result that we wanted on Saturday. So, I thought it's fitting that we put together a podcast that would not be fit for your grandmother. I want to call this and want to channel this into a burn it down podcast for this week. And that covers all bases. That's going to start with yours truly, me, and go all the way to the Board of Regents. Why not? Uh, we got a lot of stuff to cover to burn it down because we want to get the whole thing, right? We want to get the whole thing. I hope you're not scared of that. And if that does not give you any pause, go ahead and like and subscribe here because we are going to be talking about subscriptions a little bit more later um, and particularly the ones that are paid so that we can get a really sound understanding of what needs to go on here and what types of changes probably need to take place. So, um, yeah, with that said, let's go ahead and start right here. Do you recognize this picture? I know I do. I bet most of you know what it is, who it is, and what's being talked about in this picture. That's a milk jug. It says expired 2014 in reference to Jimbo's offense. And so the point being made here was that, you know what, one of the reasons why we lost to App State was because our offense was too complicated, and I've even said it as well. So let's start right here before we go any further with this picture. I should have listened to myself from what I was saying before this season. When we played Sam Houston State, we had certain things that we wanted to see, certain results and certain ways of playing that were important to have been done. And then those didn't get done. I will say this, and you you know this, I, we're all guilty of wearing those maroon colored sunglasses. And I would wish I had taken mine off a lot sooner so that I could steer you guys in the right direction as best I pro pro possibly could. But we all want to drink that maroon Kool-Aid. We want to, so bad we want to. Um, we even feel like we deserve to. It's not quite true. I'm going to get to that too. But the point is, is that everything we needed to know was there. We'd seen it. The offensive line was struggling the entire time. So let's get back to this. Again, how do you know that the offense is expired if the offensive line can't hold a block? Tell me about that. Maybe if the offensive scheme was different, it, it might mitigate some of those issues. Okay, I could listen to that. It's kind of reasonable. Fairly rational, I suppose. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I don't want to talk about it. I don't really care about it because when the um, offensive line can't hold for more than two seconds, what's the point? How, what? That's what, importance-wise, that's probably 50% of the offense, if not more, but it's about only 20, 25% of the actual total offense. I don't want to talk about the routes that are being run and how well the receivers are doing with those routes. If the offensive line can't block and get the quarterback time to actually throw the ball, hmm, my lord, who cares what kind of routes they're running? Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Very frustrating. We, it's impossible to know what this offense is capable of until this offensive line can actually do their job. So... We'll leave that at the, uh, where it is for the moment. The hits just keep on coming um, because Aki and Foster are out for the season. So, um, yeah, man, thinking about that and s s some other heavy hitters we got coming up too are just, just really kicks to the teeth on this, right? Um, we know, I think, what we thought this team is capable of and actually what it is capable of, but, you know, it, it, it's it, it, there is only really a few different areas. There's only one player that matters on an entire team that you could say, well, if you don't have that player, then sure your 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 team can't be what you think it can be. But there's another unit that needs to be um, elite for those successes to happen too, and that is offensive line. We we've known it. You and I have known it. It's just hard to it's just hard to talk about because you can work with two receivers. 
you can work with a uh, half-assed running back. And the, off the offensive line is made up of five guys minimum. So it's hard to really focus on that one group because you want to pin the problem in a singular place. And I'm not saying the offensive line is the problem, but but the concept of the offensive line is the problem. I'm not really here to blame players or anything like that. But the offensive line is our problem. It is. Um, it may not be the only problem, but it's the only one that we can accurately say right now we have to get under control before we can diagnose really any of the other problems. Sure, Haynes King has not done us any favors in many ways. He's probably been playing better than he has the first, what, two or three games that he did play, um, the last two games. But who knows exactly what he could have been doing the entire time if the offensive line was doing the job they were supposed to be doing. So I digress. So let's go on. Let's move on. And let's continue this streak. And let's talk about the press conferences. Here's what, in my opinion, Jimbo should be asked immediately. First, what are the issues with the offensive line? Press for details. Um, how are they fixed? Again, details matter here. Not that they need to execute better. Because if we want to talk about how they execute better, then the question becomes, how do you get them to execute better? Give me the ins and outs. How? What must be done so that the offense starts executing better? Let's get to the nitty gritty. And then how do you facilitate those changes? Answers to these questions, I think, would be much better to reveal the state of where this program is at. I, I've, I've got some worries, and I'll reserve those for a couple other things because there's no need to jump the, jump the gun on certain things. Um, but again, accountability needs to be had from the top down uh, and, and as wide as possible. So what questions are being asked in these pressers? Mm, I, I think it's pretty safe to say that these aren't the questions that you're getting in those pressers. Um, so think about that. Think about in these pressers what kind of questions you're hearing. And if those are the questions you need to be asked and answered, who is asking the tough questions? Where are those tough questions coming from? Are there any tough questions being asked? And... I get it. There's different dynamics going on. But if anything, that's why something like this place needs to exist. Because this place needs to be somewhere that's at least minimally independent so that things can be said that need to be said. Now I'm not here for us to all go get in a plane and crash that sucker into a mountain. That's not, that's not what this is for. This is going into the cockpit and saying, Pilot, get you together. Because otherwise, it looks like you're getting ready to fly us into the, you know, side of Mount Rainier or something like that. That's important that that doesn't happen. None of us want to go down with a ship. I want to be looking out for the iceberg. I don't want to be driving the boat straight into one. I'm not a kamikaze here. Good Lord. So who is holding these guys accountable? Bjork, you doing it? A uh, heavy dose of accountability needs to be had right there. What kind of conversations are going? I don't know. I'm not there. Time will tell, I guess. Um, we'll see. Who gave the extension, this massive extension, after one year of success? A healthy amount of uh, stuff to be said there. Wouldn't you agree? Well, I know I sure would. I know I sure would. Hmm. Goodness gracious! I mean, we're gonna we're gonna end up getting somebody hurt here. Let me bounce it over here to you on this one. A little bit of Twitter love for you. Um, what goings on that we got here? Gonna say this and then go to bed. There's a path to a functional end of year off season. It involves Jimbo committing to Weigman. Sell current players that Connor is the future. Sell potential. Um, 
I'm not sure what OCS was supposed to stand for, but other potential uh, people that Connor's the future. All that means Jimbo has to put aside uh, is he's got to put aside his ego. In large part, you know, a lot of that I agree with, and and, and I'm I'm here for some of that. But no, no. Mm -mm. Did you see when Weigman was in? Were you not deathly afraid that he was going to get hurt like I was? We almost ended the future. How do you think Max Johnson got hurt in the first place? We talked about that on the reaction after that game, wasn't it against Arkansas? There was a blocker, a defender that came up the middle nearly untouched, got too much pressure, Max threw the ball, hit the player with his finger and broke it. I mean, I'm afraid for Haynes King at this point. Put Wiegman in and then ruin the next year or two? Holy cow. I get the sentiment. I really do. String's a cool guy. Um, but uh, not, uh, not what I'm going to agree with. Um, I'm no stranger to calling out things whenever I don't agree with them um, because 90% of what this guy says I agree with, 90% of what Josh Pate says I agree with, but not this go around, and I'm not afraid to point out the times that I don't like it or like it or not. I don't care. That's just the way it, it has to be. We are here for accountability, and that's all around. I'm sure there's some things I can be corrected on too. Have at it. I'm not afraid of those kinds of things because why I'm seeking to find the best. I can't be the best without critique. So if I miss up on a stat or something, I need somebody to correct that so the viewers don't have the wrong impression. You know, or if I have a completely wrong opinion, um, that that there's there's a counter opinion to that that needs to really be taken into place. I'm not I'm not down in this guy or anything like that. I just don't agree with the take. Call me crazy on that. That's where I'm at with it right now. So, no, no Weigman right now. Uh-uh. But I think this goes as far as the Regents do. They're the ones that, uh, that approved that contract. Bjork, you know, he's got to have something to do with that too. You know, we're locked in for a long time. Long time. We were for originally too, but we'd be halfway through that contract at this point. We could ride it out for another couple years, see what's going to happen, and then get out of it if we needed to. Ooh. But not now. Not now. Looking crazy. So, what about Sharp? You thought you were going to miss out here, Mr. Sharp? I don't think so. No siree. A lot going on there, too. So, um, it's a little hard whenever you got the same leadership going on all the time, isn't it? Uh, and I, I, I think we've done some good things there. Mr. Sharp actually has... He was a big pioneer with the stadium upgrades. Um, you got to you got to you got to tip your hat to all these people one way or another at some point or another. Like I said, I started with myself on this critique. Um, I'm a nobody, so there's not there's not a whole lot to critique. But um, other than you know simple trivial things that you've heard on this podcast, so. If I'm starting with myself, I'm not going to hold back on any of the others. That's just the way it needs to be. So, who else? Not sure at this moment, but that's where I'm at with the the heavy hitters. They need to get their stuff in order um, so that the rest can get their stuff in order. Okay? Let's leave it at that. It's very important. You know, stay in the press, presser. Um, you know, Damani, I think, was talking. Pretty sure it was Damani. And he kind of alluded to, like, he could see the, the factions in the locker room. We've talked about what it may look like for when to fire Jimbo. Now, I don't think Damani was actually talking about, like, you know, the locker room's divided. Like, you've got people warned against in, in, each other like that. I just think that they kind of are, are, are not clear what's up and what's down. I, and I think other parts of his comment really tell us a lot of good things as well. So there is a silver lining here. Um, again, the, the, the L's are still on the table, but we've got to figure out where the progress is taking place and or if this team is on, on a huge just backward slide unrecoverable because that's when 
that's when you need to move on. In my opinion, when the coach has lost the team, that's when you need to move on. I still don't think he's lost the team. I just think they're confused right now. And they've got their hands up and they're trying to figure out where do we go from here? What do we do? We've worked hard. And Damani even mentioned this. You know, he, he's saying this. He, he knows it. They've worked hard in camp. Uh, they worked hard in the off season, and and the results are just not there. They're not clicking. That's to me. That's actually good news. I'm I'm really glad to hear that. Um, but it's a tough here because I'm sitting here thinking and I'm watching and I feel like I know these guys worked hard, but the results aren't there. Oh, and I hate it for the guys. I hate it for the guys. Um, man, um, I hate it for the fans. There's so many fans. There's so many great fans. This is just absolutely the best fan base that there is out there. Um, and and I kind of want to end on this part because um, with the right expectation, then you can be set at ease just a little bit more. I, I, at least that's what I think. I mean, look, we're not guaranteed to get a natty ever. We're not doesn't matter what we put into it we're not guaranteed for it to happen we're not guaranteed an sec championship we're not guaranteed a new york six bowl no matter what we do we're not guaranteed that we can't control any of that what you can control though is how you support this team and i believe this team deserves to be supported till the end no two percent or bs that's they don't deserve Two percent in us. I understand the frustration, but when it comes to reactions and ridiculousness, we need to like, for instance, we need to stop the fire Jimbo BS right now. That's not. I just don't even think that's where we should be with this. It's just not really that close. I know it feels like it should be close, but no. Let's get off of that and start supporting this team. And it's just, it's just it, everything is great about our situation if we'll just lean into it. You know, look, let's take one out of the students. It's the students' playbooks, please, on this one, right? Um, really, really sit back and look at these guys. Look what's going on right here, right? So these are two, <laughs> these are two bozos that set up a full-on hot tub situation outside for ticket pool. These are the most awesome two guys like I w I'm, I'm jealous I wish I had thought of this idea myself they've got everything they need uh, a hot tub and a TV uh, right that's you don't need anything else in that right no, no they have beer as well they're set up perfect setup but they're not the only ones they're not look at all the rest line goes around the corner this is somewhere around, I don't know, 5 a.m. this morning, ready for Ole Miss, pulling those tickets. I hadn't had a game, what, in like four weeks, five weeks? They're ready to go. These guys are diehard, never ending. I love them for it. They're the best fans in the world. We are the best fans in the world. I had never seen that team quit. I ain't never seen an Aggie quit. That's that's the good news right now. Lean into it and love it. Do what you can. Be patient. Commit to the process. I think the results will come in the end. But hold to your core values. And these trials and tribulations, hold to the core values and do what you can with that. Lean into the good parts. Rest on the good things that we have and that we are. That's all you can do. All right, Florida's coming up later. Ole Miss is coming up. We'll look at all that. Ole Miss preview, hopefully in a day or two. Running a little behind because this loss really got me. But uh, still going to stay committed to you all. If you've made it this far and you're still not scared, Halloween's coming up. I get it. But you'll get some candy if you subscribe. Just do it. Great. See you soon. Thanks and gig them.